Eight signs he has a low value mindset. Hello, my name is Greta Berishit. I'm dating and relationship coach for women. For me, awesome high value women secrets, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Just before I will share with you both eight signs, don't forget to take my free self-awareness test to find out are you behaving as a high value or a low value woman, which I will drop down in the video description box below. Get my book, which is called Devoted Relationships. I seen some of you got the PDF, the audio and the paperback, so I hope you're really enjoying it as it looks like that. You can get this on Amazon. I'll put the link in my video description box below. And if you like my merch, she's called and not pajama, you also can get it on my website as well. So now, since I'm going through a lot of signs, eight in total today, um, and there will definitely be a follow-up on this, let's start with the sign number one. And by the way, I am going to be referring to this book called The Code, um, as I got it recently and started to read it. And actually, all these signs, I only read like, not even 10 pages, like five pages, and I already just like, full of comments so and very inspired to do this video so without further ado the sign number one the title says time tested secrets for getting what you want from women without marrying them so marriage is perceived as something really really bad here so we can already see that this book is not godly because you know God is so for the marriage and um, I mean it's like the first low value sign it doesn't get more low value than that right it's basically how to use women how to take advantage of them without actually any kind of commitment without having any kind of responsibilities without marrying them right so you know if your guy doesn't want to get married and perceives marriage as something bad, well, that's the first low-value sign, you know, because, ladies, there are lots of men out there, uh, but we are, to be honest, godly men. We are some, some men that usually believe in God. You know, we are the ones that really want to get married, and really want to have families and really want to be loyal and faithful. Since becoming a Christian, I recently met really a lot of men like that, which kind of shook me by surprise because um, I wasn't a Christian before. So like these guys would just kind of not cross my path that much. Second sign, which is from this book as well, and it's basically teaching men how not to invest into a woman at all, like zero investment, and at the same time to keep your options open at all times. So ladies, be careful when you're splitting that bill 50-50 on all the days, or when you're constantly traveling to see him, or when you let him live in your flat for free without paying any bills, without paying any rent, because I love you so much and we are family now, even though we are not married, and you open your fridge and you let him use it freely, and he's there just being like a couch potato, doesn't even want to take you out, right? All of this investment, it's basically like, it's the game. It's called no investment in her game. But the way guys win with this game, they act genuine at all times. So, you know, if you're gonna just come up to a woman and say, I want this from you, I want this from you, I want this from you, nobody will give it to you, right? But when you're behaving genuine and you're charming a woman and you're giving her all the sweet words, and when you come up with, um, all kinds of excuses. Yes, a lot of times men will get away having open relationships, 
by keeping all their options open and sleeping in your bed, not paying rent and eating your food and complaining that your house is not sparkling clean as it should be. I just really want you to be aware that there are men like that and these type of books are best sellers nowadays which means majority of men have it on their bookshelf. They may not use every single thing what it says in here, but they will definitely use some things. Number three, well, this made me laugh. It basically says in here, how many times have you heard someone say, he's sociable, he's handsome, he's smart, why is he married? I actually never heard this type of saying because where I am coming from in my culture, men look really good and are fearless, men are strong, they are very masculine and they want to get married, they want children, they create families, right? When I think about it, the only men that I know that actually are very smart very sociable and handsome are the Catholic priests and we cannot get married. So apart from that, sorry, like I totally disagree with the sentence, like I literally can't think of anyone like that. And I don't know ladies about you, but my perception is when I see a man that's 60 years old, over 60, it used to be over 40 and over 50. Nowadays, I would say over 60, right? And he has never been married. And he's, you know, he's in his age, right? And when he's on a yacht with these 20 years old girls, it looks really perverted. It, it doesn't look right. It looks a bit sick. It looks quite disgusting. It looks very, very mature. It's kind of like that guy from the Playboy Mansion, right? It's just, it's just not right. So I don't know how can like this book make it sound attractive. It's, it's kind of sick, isn't it? Saying that a lot of men didn't have a good upbringing and they grew up perhaps feeling a bit geeky around women, carrying a lot of insecurities, carrying a lot of hurts. So we don't know how to approach women. We don't know how to be secure and confident. So we kind of grab on to these bestsellers and just blindly believe what it says. So if in the book, you know, it says it's bad to be married and whoever is handsome, sociable and smart. Smart is actually kind of subjective here, but these guys who are kind of lost and confused, they will be grabbing onto books like that, spreading this type of nonsense. You know, a guy from a good family, a guy from a good upbringing, he will look at this book and he'll think like, this is nonsense. Who reads this type of crap? And surprisingly, a lot of people do. Number four, so also what's funny for me here is that in this book, uh, the feminism is supported. They're basically saying that we got it easy because of the feminism. Yeah, this is what they say. That is, at the same time that feminism has made sex more readily available, less confined to the padded cell of matrimony. You see, so they're supporting feminism, which makes sense. And actually, when I read this sentence, I was kind of reflecting back on the guys that I kind of went on dates with, like in the past. It's kind of like for me now, nearly like red flag when I go on a date and I feel like the guy supports feminism. I feel like he's gonna be splitting the bill 50-50 and he's gonna be expecting to sleep with the girl on a first, second, third date because he'll be like, I'm a feminist. It's a free will. You can do whatever you want to do, right? So guys, a lot of times we kind of manipulate women with feminism and behind the scenes, we laughing at it themselves. They're like, amazing. 
feminism is fantastic. You know, I'm getting everything free. I don't need to do any kind of investment. I can sleep around. I can do whatever I want. You know, it's it's very, very easy. They go to the nightclub. Girls with their bumps in their face are trying to seduce them. Who is the biggest supporter of feminism? These type of men, of course. It makes sense, right? And then, when you have a one-night stance, when you follow the world, when you follow the society, when you follow the feminism, we as human, we are not robots, we have feelings. And when we're having these one-night stands, we feel hurt, we feel used, we feel abused, etc. However, it's all cool, so we put all these feelings under the carpet. And then, at 40 years old, men and women are sitting non-stop at the therapist office. Why? Because we have so many hurts, issues, unresolved feelings, anxieties, etc, etc, right? Just as I'm explaining this in my book. Number five, what is really praised in this book is that it says, we are not talking hard to get, we are talking impossible to pin down, right? So it's kind of like, He's such a catch that, like, you know, it's impossible to get him to marry anyone, right? Like, really, a catch, a man that's 50, still doesn't want to have a family, still doesn't want to get married, still scared of commitment because of his insecurities, because of his traumas, because of his incorrect upbringing. Wow, that is so attractive. Right. Number six. Now, this is interesting. It talks here about communication. So, ladies, I literally just read five pages, maybe even three, and I have all these comments about this. So, it talks about communication, and it says that it's good not to communicate. And I haven't even read the paragraph about it, but, ladies, it's very wise for people not to over communicate because when you're not over communicating you are keeping the mystery and the other person still doesn't know much about you you kind of have the power and nowadays we as women are really encouraged to communicate to go to the guy to show our vulnerabilities to share our feelings right while they are playing the game, not communicating, but listening and keeping their mystery, which is the power of seduction, and keeping their power because, you know, he'll tell you what he wants to tell you when he hears what you have to tell you instead of him telling you the truth of how he feels or what he wants to say if he would be saying it first. Because when you think about it, ladies, when you communicate something first, you're laying your cards first. And then the person can respond accordingly, right? Or we don't even have to respond. But if he is communicating first, then he is laying his cards first. He is the leader. He is the pursuer. And then you can think about what he says and you can respond accordingly. So be careful with communication. If he's not that communicating, don't walk around sharing all your vulnerability and every single thought that you have. Because that way you're giving him all the insights into your mind, whereas he is not really giving you anything and is keeping the mystery and is having the power. Number seven, in general, even in the book, it says the code is worldly advice. Now, I'm understanding that my videos are becoming a bit more Christian-based, and I think there is a good saying that it says, you are what you do, which kind of makes sense in my case. But um, the book is a worldly advice, right? The worldly advice is basically that's influenced by the world 
over the years, right? So it's not following God's word. It's following the society, what society is saying. So in God's word, we have, have values, we have moral standards, we have what's right, what's wrong. We have what is a man, what is a woman. We have the differences. We have how a man should treat a woman. For example, a man should love a woman like the Christ loved the church. A man's body should be like a sacrifice, you know, like Christ died for the church. So a man, if needed, should even like die for a woman. I know when I was little, this was very common. And I remember like guys in my country would easily put their bodies in front of a woman, would easily protect them like that. I don't know nowadays because things have changed in the last 20 years. But I remember as a child, this is what I was taught as growing up, right? So this book is teaching the opposite of that. It's basically a worldly advice. Take advantage of her. This is how you don't invest into her. This is how you manipulate her. This is how you use her. There are no moral codes. There are no moral values. It's just basically all about me, me, me. I have one life. I'm living it and I'm trying to take everything what I can from people as long as it's legal and I can get away with it. You know, it's it's kind of like this type of book and nowadays there are so 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 many men like that so we have to be very careful and the last one number eight which actually intrigued me a lot because i didn't know this but when i reflect back it makes so much sense so it basically says that uh, there is a code between guys, right? If your guy friend has a girlfriend, you respect your guy friend and you don't hit on the girl. You don't go for her. Unless, unless she starts to complain about her boyfriend, then you get the green light to do whatever games you want to do play whatever you want to play on her which is so bizarre and so interesting i think because i think we as women we constantly try to improve our relationships anyway a lot of times we do go to guy friends to ask for advice about let's say the guy we are dating right so when we have an issue about a guy we are dating and we asking a guy friend for advice, he sees it as a signal that you are complaining about your guy and that now he can hit on you and take advantage of you. Which to me, it makes so much sense that a lot of men, when you ask advice about your boyfriend, a husband, or, you know, or the guy you're dating, a lot of times you really take the opportunity to, to completely criticize and smash the guy you're dating and give you very, very bad advice in what you should do with your guy to solve the relationship problem. I remember this client, she was um, calling her guy friend and crying about her boyfriend. And she told him an issue. And the guy said, oh, I think you should definitely call him and confront him and tell him this and this and that. And this is what she did, right? She called the guy, she confronted him, and she just went tough with him. And the guy just said, like, you're behaving totally crazy, and he just hung up on her. And she called her friend again, telling him what happened. And the friend, she said, her friend laughed so crazy hard in her face and said, this is crazy behavior. I cannot believe you just done it. And he just kept on laughing. Yeah. Code. Guy code. Just ask me for advice, ladies. Anyway, so this is what I gathered from this um, outstanding book. 
from this um, the code as as it says. If you like this video, please press like. Let me know in the comments below what did you think. Maybe you have some similar stories. Would love to read them in the comments below. Join Greta's High Value Women's School where we are all in the same boat, learning how to be women of high value and bring out the best in our men. Follow me on my Instagram. My Instagram is called Ladies Relationship Coach. For one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or a member of my team, book us through my website, which is called gretaberishita.com. Thank you so much for watching, my queens. Kisses from Dorset. Mwah.